morning. I'm Christy Cacciano. I'm Jeff Kulikowski. 130. That's the number of schools victimized by fraudulent calls to 911 claiming either a mass shooting or a bomb in the building. That's combining the coordinated so-called swatting on March 30th and April 4th. News Channel 9's Andrew Donovan talks to the superintendent of one of the districts victimized, West Hill, who has powerful words about what needs to change. This superintendent won't put himself over his students as the victim. For a moment, they thought the unthinkable was happening. But Stephen Dunham's own family thought he could be in danger. That I'm getting texts from my own kids asking me where I am, am I okay? Word spread fast and far, even to his son, a freshman at Binghamton. Now we're talking, this was minutes, minutes after this whole thing started. He was safe, so were his students and staff. But only two days after six people were gunned down in a Nashville elementary school, a caller to 911 told dispatchers there was a shooter in the halls of West Hill High School. We had a school functioning on a normal schedule, normal day, no disruption, nothing to be alarmed about, going about their business. And meanwhile, the Geddes Police, State Police, the Sheriff's Department, um, you know, are, are all on their way responding to what they believe is an active shooter. Students watched through windows as police rushed in. After being given the all clear, the superintendent sent a powerful message to his community, including a suggestion to change gun laws. He wrote, at some point, decisions have to be made with our kids in mind, not politics, not special interests, and not re-election. That may not be popular, but it's true. For anyone who's not willing to come to the table and even talk about those issues, um, you can't step back and say, I care about kids. For a moment, the superintendent thought it was too late for his school. Now he's maximizing this second chance. In Geddes, Andrew Donovan, News Channel 9. And we spoke with the superintendent just after he stood next to State Senator John Mannion, who, in the 15 days since the statewide incidents, has written legislation to stiffen the penalty for people who report false information about a school threat involving a deadly weapon. I think the two key components here is that it identifies a school setting and it identifies reporting an incident where a deadly weapon would be involved. So that is what elevates it to a Class D felony. And that means it could come with up to seven years in prison. This is Mannion's bill. Next, he's looking for support from fellow state senators and assembly members. Another day of record-breaking warmth. What a great...